this is a project that's practical, useful, beautiful, and sometimes just outright mm, yummy. I'm talking about the washcloths, the dishcloths. Let's loom it some washcloths. Let's get right to it. I have made two different sizes of the washcloth. I have made an 8 by 8 and I've also made a 10 by 10 inch washcloth. These washcloths are made of 100% cotton and they are very absorbent. Just the other day I threw this particular washcloth in the laundry with my regular laundry. I threw it in the washer and then I put it in the dryer and when it came out, this is how it came out just so beautiful, it feels so good, it feels even more absorbent. And so I do recommend that when we finish our washcloths that we wash them, not only to get out the residue from the yarn, but because it just really does. I think your washcloths are just gonna get better the more you use them, it really feels good. Because it's so absorbent, I believe that if we wanted to make this into a larger project, that this could indeed serve as a bath mat or even some type of floor covering, a little rug, if you will. All right, so today I'm gonna to demonstrate making the eight by eight inch size. We're gonna be using 100% cotton, which I highly recommend 100% cotton. This cotton that I'm going to be using is by Lion Brand. And no, Lion Brand does not pay me money to say their name or use their cotton. It just so happens that most of my favorite yarns happen to be Lion Brand. This is a cotton from Lion Brand that's called 24-7. This is the yarn that we used a few videos back when we made the scrubbies. Today, what we're going to do, however, is we're not going to use the single strand. We're going to add it with another strand. So in other words, we're going to have two sources of yarn and we're going to treat them as one. That's why we have right here, we have white and purple, of course. This is what you get when you do the yellow and pink and then pink and white. And this is purple and yellow. So today I'm going to be demonstrating with pink and yellow. So we're going to use two sources. Now, if you want your washcloths to be a solid color, just one color, then the way you would achieve that is make sure that both of your source yarns are the same color. Okay. We're going to use, um, of course, a loom. This is a 24 peg loom that I'm going to demonstrate on. However, there is no reason that I couldn't just as easily use this big old 41 peg loom because what we need for the eight inch washcloth is 20 pegs. So we're going to start off by wrapping 20 pegs. So as long as your loom has at least 20 pegs, then you're good to go. It's the right loom. So because we're going to do rest, start off by wrapping 20 pegs and we're going to go back and forth. We're going to knit a row, purl a row, knit a row, purl a row, much the way we would do if we were making a scarf. So I'm just going to be, I just happen to be demonstrating on this 24 peg loom. So we're going to take our two yarns and like I say, we're going to work with them as if they are one. So we're going to take from our source yarn, but we're going to act like it's one yarn. Okay. Now the thing that's going to be a little different when we start this project, now we're used to, and we are going to make a loop to begin. We always start with a loop and we put the loop on the anchor peg. What we're going to do today though, is we want to make sure, oh, let me say this because, okay, we make the loop and then that little part that hangs there, that's called the tail. And so we have the part that's connected to our source yarn, which are the balls right here. And then we always have a little tail once we make our loop. Now, the thing we want to do that's different today is we want to make a really, really, really long tail. We want a tail that's at least 10 inches. Normally when we are making our loop, we get a tail that's like this, maybe five inches, something like that. But today we want to make it really long. I'm going to suggest at least 10 inches. We want our tail on the loop to be at least 10 inches. So 
when we make the loop, however it is that you make your loop, you make your loop, and then we're going to have this extra long tail that's at least 10 inches on the side. Okay, so we're going to do just like we always do, though. We're going to take that loop once we have it, and we're going to put it on the anchor peg. We're going to tighten it up, and we're going to take that extra long tail, and we're going to put it right behind the anchor, drop it right inside, and we're going to hold it there for a little while. We're just going to hold it out of the way while we get started. And so we're going to start with the E-wrap. We're going to go E-wrap. E wrap and we want to do 20 pegs we're gonna wrap 20 pegs in order to get the 8 inches that we want our washcloth to be so I'm gonna wrap wrap now the only reason why I can do this and I don't have to count at the same time is because I know that this loom only has 24 pegs so when I get to the end the way I'll know I'll have 20 is there will be four pegs. My balls keep trying to run away from me over here. Um, I will have four pegs that are not wrapped. Okay, so one, two, three. All right. One, two, three, four. Okay, so we have 20 pegs that are wrapped. And then we're going to just hold that gently a little bit and try to push these down just a little because what we're going to do is we're going to, you know, we're making room for our next row because we... We know that in knit E-wrap e knitting, we need two loops on each peg, and then we're going to pull the bottom peg up over the top. So this is our 20th peg. We want to go back that way. So the first time we get to the 20th peg, we're just going to head that away, and then we're going to drop between those the first two right there. So we're going to head that way, and we're going to drop between, and then we're going to start going backwards <laughs> it's like we're doing the backstroke we're going to go right back <laughs> right back <laughs> where we started from so we're just going to keep going back and we're doing the e-wrap e-wrap and my yarn keeps wanting to run away from me and we are now back at our first peg and we're going to hold it while we pull up that bottom loop over the top loop. And of course, the first time you're starting the project, pulling that bottom peg over the top is always a little bit of a challenge, but we're gonna just go ahead and do that. And now that we've done the, the, that one, we can let go. Uh, we don't have to hold it anymore. And we can go ahead and we're gonna go around and pull the bottom loops up over the top and very easy and very gently, we're just gonna do that all around. And we are loom knitting. Okay, so the bottom over the top. And, and now we've done 18, 19, and 20 so we've done all of our pegs we have our first row of knit and now we're going to go to where our to the other end where our source yarn is right now and what we're going to do is we're going to purl now to purl we know we would take this on the outside lay it on that peg right there we would take our pick go under Go over and we're going to scooch it up. That's how we do the purl, if you remember. But before we do the purl on, on this project, we're going to take this off the anchor peg, that little tail. We're going to take that off. And we're going to take the loop out. So pull that loop right out. So we got the loop out. And there's our extra long tail. Now, here's the yarn that we would normally be knitting with if we were going to be doing the purl. This is our source yarn. But for this project, we're going to combine that extra long tail that we did. We're going to join that with the source yarn. 
And now for a few pegs, we're going to be working with the loop on top, but we're going to have four different strings now because we have joined the tail yarns with the source yarns. So we're going to treat all of this as one. So to purl, we're going to do our regular purl where we would go underneath and then we would go over. And the idea is this kind of scrunch that up until we get a loop. Now, mind, we have all these yarns, so you gotta hold all these yarns and kind of keep them in place. While you take this one off, take everything off and put the new loop back on. And then you're gonna pull gently. And we're gonna purl like this until we run out of the tail yarn. So we're gonna go here, like we would do a normal purl, only now we're pulling up four strings. And one thing to try to keep in mind too, is when you take it off, you wanna keep it facing the way you take it off so that you wanna keep those loops coming back the way they were facing. And you're gonna pull it gently. Okay, we're going to purl again, pull all those yarns up. Okay, we're gonna pull it off and we're gonna put all that loop back on. Pull gently. Go to the next peg and we're going to just keep purling and pulling up the loops. And as we do with purl, we remove everything from the peg and then put all of those strings, that whole loop, back on intact like that. Pull gently. We're gonna go to the next. And so we're gonna just keep purling. And we're going to keep purling. Take that off. Put all those strings on. We're gonna keep purling until we run out of the tail string, we might run out of the tail string before we finish our row. Look at that. And we're gonna pull. Now, I don't know if we have enough in the tail string. Now, this is our regular source string. This is the tail string that we joined with it. So I don't know if we're gonna have enough to make another loop, but we'll see if we make another loop, can make another loop or not. So we're gonna take all four of those and pull it up and we're gonna take all of that off and put the loop back on there. Okay, so I don't know if we can pull those tail strings or not right now. So, okay, if you can find the ends, we probably should have stopped while we were ahead over there. But we're gonna take these tail strings and we're gonna just bury them inside, push them inside out of the way. And now we're we're just going to use the source string to continue until we finish purling our row. So we're going to use the tail string with the source string until the tail string runs out. And then we will just continue as we are doing with the source string. So we're going to keep on purling now and just keep purling until we get to the end of this row. I'm gonna keep purling with you. I'm gonna, I wanna stay with you while we purl the rest of this row and we get through our next row of knits. Okay, so. So purl. Over, push up, take everything off, put that back on, and and like I said, try to keep the loops, if possible, facing the way that they came off.
we're at our last purl. Take everything off, put that loop on, pull gently. Okay, so now we're ready to go back the other way. So if that's all we're gonna be doing, just going back and forth, back and forth. One row of knit, one row of purl, then a row of knit, row of purl, a row of knit. Okay, so now in order to get our row of knit, we've gotta put two loops on each peg so that we can have a loop on top to pull the bottom over. So we're gonna go back this way, and this time we're just gonna wrap, we're just gonna go under and under and under. So from now on, when we start our row to get an, our knit stitch, we're gonna, we've done a purl, and then we're gonna go under and around, under, around, under, around, under, around, and we're just gonna go all the way back to where we came from. <laughs> And we're just e-wrapping. Uh, just keep the um, any strings out of the way, but everything is okay. Everything is good. It's, all right, and now we are back here. And then now the thing is that we have, of course, four strings to pull up over those two. Um, so we're gonna just go like that and kind of Hold that one down a little bit so it doesn't pop off. And then we're just going to go all around, I guess, using those four strings as if they're one. These are the strings that are combined. They, they are the tail and the source yarn combined. And we're going to go up and over, up and over. And so now we are finishing a row of pearl. Now, what we did when we combined the tail string with the source string is we knitted, we loom knitted those strings within so that at the end of our project, we're not gonna have to worry about trying to hide those strings or trying to um, get them hidden in there because we just knitted them in there. So the only it's only when we bind off that we're going to have to hide the strings and uh, make the strings strings um, disappear with using the a darning needle. But right now this end is covered because we basically just we just now knitted those that tail in there and we closed up that end. You'll understand better when you see it at the end. Okay, so now um, it's time to purl. Now, one way to remember whether you're knitting or purling, for instance, if the phone rings or you put it down for a while, for this particular project, the when you, you see the source yarn is near the anchor peg, then that means it's time to purl. If the source yarn is here, near the peg, then you're gonna go back this way and you're gonna purl, you're gonna go to the outside, lay it across, and we're gonna do our purl stitch that we did before, and we're just gonna go back the other way. So right now, until we get to about seven inches, this is all we're gonna do. We're going to do one row of knit, one row of purl, one row of knit, one row of purl. So. I'm going to just do a few more of these pearls. And after I do that, I'm going to come back after I have done a few more inches. So understand, it's just we're just making one row of knit, one row of pearl, one row of knit, one row of pearl, one row of knit. And we're going to keep doing that until we have just about or a little over seven inches. So I'm gonna keep purling here and I'm gonna come back when I have a few more inches. You're going nice and easy, not too tight, not too loose, but definitely not too tight. It's just kind of falling where it will and we're just guiding it.
Now, before I start my next row, I want to measure because we don't want it to get past um, too far past seven inches. So the way we're going to measure is we're going to take our measuring tool and we're going to put it right at the top of where the project is on the on the pegs and then we're going to measure out. So right now we're just at about three and a half inches. So we just don't want it to get too far past seven. When it gets to seven, that's when we want to start thinking about binding off. Okay, so we have a little ways to go yet. So you can measure, measuring is in lieu of having to keep count of every row that you do. There are some projects where that's necessary, where it's very important that you're precise. But with the washcloths, I think we can be a little easier about it and we are just going to measure use a measuring tape to guide us on where we are and when we should we should start to finish off okay my project is measuring just just the tad over seven so i'm going to start doing the last two rows now the last row this is important the last row you want to do on your washcloth is a row of pearls so if you're at about seven or seven and a half and your next row is going to be a pearl then that's going to be your last row i'm going to do i think my next row is going to be a row i'm going to knit and then when i do this row of knits i'm going to pearl and that's going to be my last row because we don't want it to go too far past seven we don't want definitely don't want it to pass eight and so I'm going to do this row of knit stitches, then do the row of purl, and I'm going to stop, and that's when I'm going to get ready to cast off. The last row that you want to do on your washcloth is a purl. And the reason why that's important is because we want to end up with the working yarn at the last peg we started on. We want the working yarn over here and the way to get that working yarn over here is to do a row of purl and we'll end up with the working yarn on the last peg. We need the working yarn on the last peg for the cast off that we're going to do. So right now my working yarn is on the last peg but I still have, I want to make it just a tad longer so I'm going to go ahead and do a row of knit and then this will be my last row of knit and I'm going to come back this way with a row of pearls and that way I'll have my working yarn at the last peg and then we're going to start binding off okay so I'm going to go ahead and knit this row and and remember that one on the end when you knit it just make sure it stays on so it doesn't pop off and just kind of push it make sure it's there and then we're going to knit this over all right so i'm going to come back after i have done my last row of pearls i just finished my last row of pearls I have my working yarn at the last peg as opposed to the first peg. We want to make sure the working yarn is the last peg for our cast off that we're about to do. But just before we do the cast off, one of the things we want to do is we want to make sure that when we do cast off, it's not too tight. It Sometimes when you're casting something off or binding something off, it tends to pull in. And so how we have this first in is really free and easy and looks really nice and loose. Well, we want to make sure as much as we can that the top, even though we're going to be casting off, also remains a little loose. Now, this is the way that I do it. I'm going to go to that last peg that has the working yarn. Let me move all of this out of the way. So not so confusing around here okay so we're going to go to that working yarn that is attached to the this last peg right here 
and we're going to take our pick and we're going to pull that yarn and we're going to pull it we're pulling that yarn that's the last peg and we're pulling that yarn and we're going to pull that yarn until we wrap it about halfway around the loom so that's that loop we pulled that loop and we stretched it like that and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to the next peg and I'm going to pull it but I'm going to make sure that each one remains a little loose so we want it loose we want to make sure it's loose so what we're doing we can do it with our fingers just make sure it's loose we want it loose around there we want it looser than it was we want it loose okay and we're just going to do this all around and I find that this um, works for me in making sure that um, that we just want it loose we just want to make everything keep everything kind of loose watch the loops that they don't pop off or get tangled let's see we want to keep it loose like that we want it loose and we're just going to keep doing this until we have loose. And loose. And loose. And loose. And this is it. We just just want to make it loose to the point where it's not even really touching we don't want it hugging the peg just want it loose okay and and it may not always even out in that case we're going to go back the other way and just kind of but we want to make sure that every loop on every peg is relatively loose and loose loose all right and now we have some excess so we're just gonna put that in and we're just going to go back the other way. And loose. Loose. And we, if we have excess, we'll go get back to the first peg where we started pulling this and we'll just then um, pull the excess back through. But we want it loose. Loose and loose and we barely wanting we barely want the loop to even touch the peg. We just want it really loose. And There we go. And loose, barely touching the peg. That is really loose. And it's going to make the bind off just a lot easier, too. And loose. Loose and now back here. Loose and okay. And so now all of those loops are just really loose. So loose that now we can practically we can do the cast off with our fingers. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the second peg in. 
So we're going to take the second peg here and we're going to lift that up. I'll do it with this, with the peg, uh, just so you can see. We're going to lift that up. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to put it on the first peg. So we took it off the second and put it on the first. We're going to pull this from the bottom and over. Very easy, very loose. And we're going to take this one and we're going to put it back over here. So we're going to take this and put it back over here. And now we're going to go to the second again. Second one in. We're going to skip the first. Go to the second. We're going to pull these loops off. Put it on top of this. And we're going to use the pick to lift this up and over. Okay. And then we're going to take this and put it back over where it was back over there so we're going to skip this one go to the neighbor which is the second one in we're going to take it put it on the first one we're going to take our pick and lift that one up over that one very easy and now we're going to take this one and put it back Okay, again, we're going to go in right here. We're going to lift this one up and we're going to put it next door and take it to the left. All right, now we're going to take the our pick and lift that bottom up over. Okay, very easy, very loose. And then we're going to take this one and take it back to the right. So we're going to keep doing this all around, up and over, and we're going to put it back over here. All right, so take it over, put it here, we're going to lift, well, we can, <laughs> you can practically do everything with your fingers because we loosened everything up. All right, so we're going to take this one it over here but I'm going to use the pick to it over and then we're going to take this one and put it back over here and lift this one up off and over and the bottom one up and over and then we're going to put this one back over here now we're going to go to the neighbor Lift the neighbor up, put the neighbor over here, lift the bottom up over, and now we're going back to the right, put it back over there. All right. And the same thing, we're just going to take the second one in, put it on top. It is easier to lift with the pick, but then using your fingers works better for everything else, I think. Okay, and so here we go. Put that loop over there. Take that off. I'm gonna take this and put it back over here. All right, we're gonna lift this off and put it on this one. Up and over and we're going to take this and put it right back over there all right same feel bottom up and over real easy take this one put it on that one we're going to take this one off and put it on top of this one over. Now we're going to put this one back there. All right, we're almost at the end. And over there, up and over, and this one back. Over, over, and over 
Let me raise the pick over and back. Okay. And over and over and back. All right. And now we're going to go over and over and we're done. I'm taking that off now. There. Okay, so now we have our washcloth and so like magic We have this last loop, but like magic, if we just cut thread and cut it a little long, because on this end, you are gonna have to uh, weave it in. So make this one a little long, cut it. But then when you just pull this through, like magic. Okay, there we have it. There's our washcloth. Now on this end, because we combined the tail with the source string and we loom knitted it. We actually wove it in. We don't have any problems here. We can just go ahead and cut these little strings that are sticking out. Okay, this end is totally together and this end is together. What we're going to do now is we're going to weave these um, yarns here, I'm going to hide them along here and kind of tack it in there. So we're going to take our darning needle and thread it. Okay. Now for this, what we're going to do is we're going to take the needle and we're going to go in here and kind of hide we want to kind of hide our, we don't want it to be too visible. We want to try to hide it in between these, these loops here. So we're just going to bring it in there. So I don't know if you saw what I did. It's just a matter of taking this, taking the needle and you're going to slide it through there. Try not to be make it obvious. Just kind of hide it amongst the loops that are already there. And weave it in like that. And I'm just going to pull it through. that. All right. So we've kind of hidden that string and we could, we could weave it a little bit longer if you wanted to, or really, okay, I'll do a few more, do it in a little bit more, but basically, okay, we're going to pull it through and then we're going to just kind of go back the other way that kind of tack it in there so go this way and now we're gonna cut this string you're gonna pull it a little bit so it all right and then we're gonna absorb back into all right so here is our dishcloth okay there you have I hope you enjoy your washcloths and keep this in mind. We have the washcloths and a few videos back, we did the scrubbies. So just take a scrubby and include it with the washcloth and that will make a beautiful housewarming gift for someone. Okay, I'll see you next time. Peace.